What's up, guys? Chris with Croft CNC and CNC for newbies here. Uh, got a really cool, uh, quick little class for you. Uh, I just wanted to kind of explore uh, some of the things that some of the guys have asked me about, and that's um, the the use of Aspire and how to actually start to create a part um for an stl file for 3d carving so right now as as you can see in the background we're we're still settling into our new house and um at our house i have my cnc for newbies 4896 machine uh it is three axis uh does a full 48 by 96 inch sheet of plywood uh mdf stuff of that nature um I'm going to use it to make my own moldings and doors and stuff like that in my house. Um, and in doing so, you kind of have to start to create something. You may not find something readily available that works for your decor. In my case, I'm doing a lot of skulls, uh, a lot of daggers and stuff like that. A lot of, a lot of kind of, uh, dark imagery, HR Geiger type stuff. Um, and then I'm also going to mix that with some kind of floral designs um, and, and create an odd stack. So uh, for the first part of it, the floral design, uh, there are a lot of things out there, but you can also hand draw your own stuff. And uh, I've done... I've done videos on that in the past where you take a piece, uh, you hand draw it on paper, you scan it in, you take that scanning, put it into uh, V-Carve or Aspire, and then um, basically make a vector of it. Uh, same thing's going to happen here, except for we're going to take it one step further. And in Aspire, we're actually going to... Uh, start creating components for what we want to make. Um, in my case, we're going to make a little floral gor uh, corbel that we uh, saw on uh, Google. And uh, I'll show you here right now. So let me put that on there. And then we've got some corner pieces that we're going to make into a little design. So we're going to be working with this design right now and going from there. And now let's do this. Okay. So the very first thing that I did, I'm going to blank that layer and the very first thing that I did was I went up here to import bitmap. I clicked on it and I just imported the JPEG. Okay. So I get something like this. And then if you click on it, you could see it's a very rough hand drawing um, and, and whatnot. So the very first thing that I did was I took a line and I did a straight line, not very straight, but you could see here, I took a line and I actually dropped it right down the center. I also made a boundary box of how wide my material is going to be. Um, and that will kind of tell me how I have to do my glue up, what I have to joint, what I have to plane and what I have to squeeze together to get the material block itself. In this case, um, we're looking at about a four and a half inch foreign, foreign five eighths. To, to get the material block here. Um, and that would be representative of the, the width of the material. This, 
This one would be representative of the depth of the material. And then the height would be this. So I have this size to about a 12 by four and five, six, four and five eighths uh, block by 12 inches long. Um, and then you could do the same thing over here just by pulling that in, uh, closing, click it, and drag it to where that needs to be, then pull that up and go from there, okay? So now we have a bounding box here. Um, we can go to object size. So the width is about four inches tall. The height is 12 inches. So basically a little bit over four inches for the, the actual depth that we need to make our stock. Okay. Now in doing this design, we have uh, a couple features here that we're going to start uh, going into. So if we highlight the drawing, you can see it is a hand drawing. It's not absolutely in. Um, it has a taper to it. So we have to take that stuff into account um, and then kind of start building from there. So all I did was I took the center line and I basically put the circles in first and uh, started going from that part. And then um, I will start kind of drawing in my boundaries and everything like that, but I'm only going to do it on one side. The reason why I'm only going to do it on one side is because this design is going to be a symmetrical corbel design. So I want to make sure that I continue that design on through. Um, so I have all of these pearls here. You can see in the, in the hand drawing, there are the pearls. Um, but you can see that they kind of go off the taper and they start pulling themselves over to one side. So I just basically got them all the same size uh, in circular pattern right along the center line. And I just kind of placed them where I thought they would be. Um, then down here, I, I just started drawing in uh, the design around here. And being that this is a hand design, um, I could shrink and stretch this a little bit, but I'm actually going to make the side a taper and I'm going to keep this part pretty much symmetrical. Um, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, and then we'll put all those designs in, uh, right in through here in just a second. But the first thing that I started with was these little pearls. And then I took each one of those pearls and I click on the, the diameter of the circle. I go to my modeling tab and you can see these components. Um, there's component one. Uh, so all I did Let's see if we can grab another one. I'll select the vector boundary. I'll go to create a shape from vector outlines. I want a, a hemisphere. I have an angle to it, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, I have a base height and then I have a shape height. Okay. So at this point, you can use this by itself and then have it set proud of other uh, designs, or you can have it actually part of and merged with the other designs. 
So in my case, I want it to merge. I'm going to select that. I'm going to click apply. I'm going to click start new component and I'm going to close. So now if I go to 3D view, you can see I have a little bit of shape to those. Okay. Um, and I may go in and change those out a little bit. Um, okay. But they're kind of on top of each other now. Let's uh, go in here. Our shape height is almost three eighths of an inch. Our base height is zero. I want to take that down quite a bit. So there we go. Okay, so now I'm just playing around with what looks good on on this. Um, I'm gonna take those down to an eighth inch. Okay, and we'll just go through and clean all of those up. Um, and as you do this, you kind of have to, you kind of have to know what you want to do, um, what you're looking for. There, there's a certain idea that you might have in mind and you might actually have to go back and play with this three or four times before you find out uh, something that you want to do. And we're just going to go through, drop all these down. And we want to make sure we hit enter on those uh, to make sure that they take in the modeling properties. And I'm liking the look of this so far as far as getting the design going. Um, it's going to get us kind of a start of where we need to be. Um, it's not absolutely fantastic, but we're also just starting out. All right. It gives me a good idea of where I want to be. We're going to go there. All right, so now we have a kind of model design in there and figured out. And then up here, I did the same thing with these pearls. And I'll just start playing around with those. So I haven't created anything from them yet. Let's do these in zero. Let's do those in a 10, our height. Let's do those at point two. All right. 
and we're going to apply that, start a new component. Now, this one, we're going to keep everything the same, but we're going to start at 0.25. This one, we're going to start at say 2.4 and then this one we're going to go a full quarter inch and that's going to give us a little bit of a stepping stone and it's ever so slightly but it's something that you know is there okay and as we do this we want to make sure that we have additive and we Click apply and start new component. Um, gonna apply, start a new component. Now that's gonna be the tapered down. Now we're gonna go two, two, five, apply, start a new component. And this one, we're going to go 0.2. Now we'll go to 3D view. Now you can see how that's starting to kind of come about. Go back to this one. Apply. There we go. Okay. Now we want to check this one out. It's 0.475. That should be 0.25. Or no, that should be 0.2. Enter. Two, two, five, two, four, two, four, nine, two, five, two, four. Okay. Okay, all that looks good finally. All right, now, as you can tell here, this was really just a uh, simple setup uh, as far as striking a vector. Um, and we'll just continue that on. We'll close that. We're going to go back to drawing. And now we're going to start mapping some of this other stuff in. And you're just going to continue building on all of this until there's nothing else left to build on. So now we know that We want to take this, that's going to be looped in that way. That's going to be straight across. So we'll just take that, take that. OK. 
Okay. Gonna have to draw an angle line there. Okay. All right. So now we'll control V and by using control V, we're going to move that. And then we'll keep moving that and checking alignment. Even though this picture is blurry, it gives us kind of a good starting area. Okay. Okay. I think I want to drop that down a little bit more. And then here, I think I'm going to pull in a an arc. Okay. So now I'm going to use my trim tool. I'm going to go in. I'm going to trim up a little bit. Okay. Now I'll trim this up. All right. And now I can actually start mapping all of this out. And instead of creating a model with this shape, I'm probably just going to use a regular flat profile on this face. I might use a um, a uh, design profile that I draw. Um, you can create a you can create what's called a two rail sweep and a lot of a lot of these aspects uh of doing this is going to be seen in michael m uh mike i'm i apologize i can never say your last name um but let me see if i can pull up his youtube channel uh and give him a plug because Mike has been integral in, in uh, teaching a lot of people how to how to do this stuff. Uh, let's see here. All right, and let's let's share screen. We'll stop screen. We'll share. Share window. Okay, there's his uh, YouTube channel. And there is a ton of great stuff. This little series right here is really a great series um, to show you guys what you're dealing with. Okay. Um, but all of this stuff, man, Mike is a master at doing these STLs. And that's actually how I learned how to do a lot of this stuff was this Gothic framing. Um, that was a great one. And then uh, this series here really put a lot of the stuff that I learned into a video format that a lot of people can understand. So you basically just keep keep going from there as far as as what you know he he's putting out and what we're what we're looking at 
Um, and that's, that's really just how I did all of these different parts, um, was replicating what he showed on the videos. Um, but the two rail sweep is, is really a phenomenal tool. Once you learn how to use it, um, Pull that in and I just kind of go around and and play around and don't be afraid to use your node tool um, put a little bit on it there we can actually Do something like that there. Trim that up. Um, and then pull that in. And you'll notice to modify a lot of this stuff, I just go right here to the node edit mode and, and clear that stuff up. Pull that in in a little bit of a arc. Okay. So as, as I'm building this model, uh, some things to keep in mind is I know how I'm going to map out this part to machine it. And I'm actually going to use a planing uh I'm going to use a, a four tooth uh, indexable flattener for surfacing. And I'm going to surface this back end first. So I'm going to lay this face of the wood. If you think of a square piece of wood, I'm going to lay this face down on the table. And then I'm going to surface this back piece. And I'll just go back and I'll clear it. Then I'll flip it over and... I'll actually only rotate it 90 degrees so that I hit this side. And whenever I hit that side, I'm going to surface it. Then I'm going to rotate that 180 degrees and rotate this side up. And I'm going to surface that. Once I have that surfaced, I'm going to go in and carve the details on this side. So all of these details will get carved. Then I'll flip it 180 degrees back over to this side. And all of these details will get carved on this side. Okay. This is a really nice way of doing um, kind of a fourth axis carve without having a fourth axis. Okay. So I'll carve that side and that side. And then I'll lay this back piece here down on the machine and on the machine bed and then i'll carve all of this design on the front surface so a majority of this wood will be cut away so as you're building up your wood you can also build up or as you're building up your design you can also build up your stock in a way that you know, okay, a lot of the bulk is taken away here and here, and I don't have to worry about it. So if you know your material is like that, and you go in, it's a half inch, so uh, two by four would be one and a half thick. Uh, and then it'll be four inches wide. Um, we're gonna make ours about 14 inches. All right.
And the reason why I'm moving this up a little bit, not a little bit, but I'll move that up quite a bit, is I'm going to give myself some room to actually have some uncarved parts that I'll just cut off with the handsaw at the end of it. Okay, so now I'll just replicate this. I'll just control V and I'll move it there. And now what's really fun is I can come over here and right in this area, I can strike a line. Okay. And then I can replicate that line right up to about there. And I can get rid of that. Okay. Looking good so far. Okay. And now I can control V. I can take that and pull it back that way. And all right. And I can leave that part there. And now I'm actually building my, my stock as I do this. So now I know I need three layers of, of two by four that's planed and jointed and stacked and glued and press, pressured together with clamps or uh, a big press or whatever you you may choose and i can actually make this part with a lot of this wood already removed and i could go in and trim this up a little more and really have a close fitting part that takes away a lot of my machine time before i ever start putting it on the machine okay so as you start doing this, really start playing around with, okay, I can save time here by taking the bulk of this down and, and going from there. Um, so for this part, I'd probably start with two by sixes. And I would buy, let's see if I'm doing two of them, I'd probably buy an eight foot two by six. And I would just start cutting. Uh, I know I'm going to need uh, two 14 inch pieces, a couple small pieces, a couple medium, and a couple medium. So that should give me enough to do two corbels on each end, which is what I need. So that helps lay out that part. And you can actually see. A lot of this stuff, there is a um, a Russian, uh, I'm trying to think, a Russian uh, show here, not show, but uh, a Russian YouTuber, that's what I was trying to say, um, that does a lot of really cool stuff. Um, and let me, I'm trying to find let's see here. Um, as you can see, oh, no, 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 yes. Okay. Um, and this guy here 
if you know what to look for or you can read into the videos, this guy is going to be an immense help. Um, and he actually has a Corbel video. Um, let's see here. Where is that video? Here's a really easy way. That's kind of what we're doing to start with. Um, yeah, this this is a Corbel video right here. But if you just look up Russian CNC, you'll find him. Uh, his name's like Illa, uh, and it starts with a B. Um, but he shows a lot of stuff on the CNC that you can read into. Um, this is another great resource that I used. Um, and then um, I have I have some that I use for actually designing the finished part. Okay, so let me find that. Let's see here. Um, and yes, this is the group here. So let's share that screen. Okay, so this is the group here. They make some absolutely beautiful stuff and they're based out of Vietnam. Uh, and some of the stuff that they build is so fantastic. Like you can learn a lot just from watching their movies on how to put these large sections together. So if you combine this with, uh, Ilya's videos and then understand Michael's videos on how to create these parts, you can actually come up with a really big, beautiful uh, build on your on your table for very little um, as far as that, all of that goes. Um, you know, we've got the stock pieces here for the stock wood. Um, and you can chop saw this stuff and then glue them together clamp them to a table nice and flat. You can flatten it with your surfacing bit on the CNC and then go through and start picking up a lot of, um, a, a lot of the detail. Uh, oh man, I, I didn't even see that I had comments guys. I'm so sorry. I've been, I've been working on, uh, kind of showing you guys the videos, kind of showing you the, the quick, tips and tricks that I'm doing. I didn't even look at the, the comments. So we've actually got Michael M in the house here. Um, we've got a Facebook user that says, greetings, Chris. Um, Michael says, greetings, Chris. Uh, he says, thank you. We're all working for each other. And uh, at Croft CNC is so intense. Thank you. Uh, I have a, another one that says, would you still do a roughing pass? Um, I absolutely would do a roughing pass on a lot of this stuff because a lot of my builds like this, I would use a hardy wood, like uh, maybe a teak, a walnut, a Indian rosewood. Um, I, I personally, there are two woods that I love to do moldings out of. And that's Brazilian cherry and Indian rosewood. Now, here's another little tip and trick. If you understand what makes those colors so beautiful in those woods, you can replicate those in a soft, softer wood like a uh, maybe a white pine or something of that nature. 
Uh, and once again, I went to YouTube and I looked up uh, staining, glazing, and toning wood. And what that does is that kind of tells you a way to color these pieces after they're done to look like other woods. So this whole thing can be made out of a white pine that you then stain with uh, maybe like a walnut uh, or, or maybe um, an ebony that you seal the wood first, you stain it, that picks up the light and transitions the dark. That's called glazing. Then you let that dry. Once it dries, you tone it with a red dye that you spray over top and toning it, you can actually build up layers of color and then uh, you can either let that dry or seal it. And then once you seal it, you'll actually put like a, um, maybe like a rosewood um, stain on top of that as a glazing. So you have, you have a um, sandable clear stain as the sealer. You then have a glazing of like a black ebony that will go into the crevices uh, of the hearts. Um, and then you will uh, tone that with like a red and then you will glaze it one more time with the actual stain that you want to use and you can do it lighter or darker and you can play around with a lot of this stuff um, just by knowing how you're going to put this together what wood you're going to use how you're going to design it you're going to be able to really replicate something so beautiful without having a rotary table without having to have you know 5,000 different setups. Literally, you're going to have probably two tool changes on each side. Um, then from there, uh, we got another comment. Oh, Michael M. still on here. Mike, thank you so much for putting out the videos that you do. Um, I had no idea that he was on here before, guys. Uh, go check him out. Give him a subscribe on YouTube. Um, and, and Mike, uh, once again, thank you for putting out all of the modeling videos you do on, on a spire. Um, you know, that helps us out so much. So from the rest of the guys in all of the groups, thank you for what you do. Um, anyways, um, so just just by knowing what materials i'm going to use how i'm going to manufacture this part i can then start designing my part based on that and the reason i want to take all of this stuff into account is as i'm doing my designs i might not need to concentrate too much on this side profile because it's already going to be machined out for me. And then I might have to take a little bit of hand finishing right along this edge. Okay. Um, because that's going to be where the two corners kind of come together. And whenever they come together like that, you're going to find that um, you're going to, you're going to find that this stuff, uh, gives you a little bit of a sharp edge where the the tooling marks go vertical on each one of them. So as you rotate to the side and then you start cutting down this way, you're going to get kind of a sharp edge. And whenever you do that, that will, that will show through. You're going to have to kind of sand those edges a little bit. Um, but in understanding that, you could take care of that right away. And then on top of it, um, you could use like a lot of rest machining um, uh, ideas to rough this stuff in. And as you, 
think um, Michael Nizzo. Uh, uh, Nizzo, uh, if I if I remember correctly, it's Nizzo Woodworks. Uh, Mike, you you do great work over in Hawaii, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, and and it's pretty cool because you deal with an aspect of doing this stuff that a lot of us don't have to. Um, and if you guys get a chance, go check out uh, Nizzo's uh, Facebook page and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. If if that's the right one, Michael, if you're uh, Michael Nizzo, if you are the one that I'm talking about uh, that has a a a uh, little bit harder issue than most with getting uh, stuff on and off your table and whatnot. Give me a, give me a yes. And uh, let me know because uh, I was looking at your stuff um, and I really like your stuff and thank you for what you do. Um, but he says, thinking about stepping into home design. Oh, he lives in Hawaii. That is the one that I'm thinking of. Uh, the house market is crazy now, but Koa is $23 a board foot. Uh, I think Shogi Bon uh, on some cheaper wood. Yes, that's uh, that stuff. Sorry about that. My dogs are thinking it's playtime. Um, but Michael, that's that's definitely a way to use inexpensive wood to then turn around and make it look like a more expensive wood for uh, parts that are going to be up molds, molds and models that are going to be up and stuff like that. Um, but anyways, as you guys can see, uh, I'm mapping out quite a, quite a bit of stuff without ever really having to get into the meat of a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, but I kind of showed you guys the, the modeling menu, the create shape. Um, you can use the two rail sweeps. You can do, uh, extruding an axis. Uh, you can do spinning or turning. Uh, you can sculpt the model. You can create a textured component. Now, this is really cool because you can add a lot of depth to your model by coming in and adding a vector boundary and then just doing a texture right in that area. So you could do a, a vector boundary right in this area of this design. And instead of having a nice, smooth con, uh, that would be a convex shape um instead of having that convex shape you could add a convex shape with a wood grain texture with a um woven texture just in that part and really set that whole part of your design uh away from the rest of the design so there would be so much to look at in this design if you did that um then you can go in and start splitting shapes and everything like that. Um, so for, for right now, we're coming up on an hour of talking about all this stuff. As, as we talk about all this stuff, um, I'll never be able to go through and teach you guys uh, in one sitting everything. But the, the few videos... Our, our YouTube channels that I pointed you to, please, um, please go in and give them a subscribe and take a look at what they're doing. Uh, we got it. Michael Nizzo says he's starting a YouTube soon. Mike, if you send me a, uh, if you send me a note on that, I will put that out on a live for you and try and get you some subscriptions. Um, I really enjoy uh, seeing other people grow. And Nizzo, you're going to do great. 
uh, and the fact that you have a different perspective on stuff, I would love to have you on a live sometime and uh, take a look at at maybe talking about that aspect of it because that always intrigues me. Um, there's actually a gentleman at the uh, CNC for newbies facility that is in the same position. So, you know, something, something in common, something you guys can talk about and deal with, with, um, with a little bit more understanding between the two of you. Uh, Michael M came back, Chris, what's the other channel you're talking to? Um, so there, there were two other channels, uh, uh, Mike M, uh, and it is, uh, this woodworking craftsman. Um, and then, uh, these guys here, the, this Russian, uh, family setup. And for those of you that are not um, too keen on it, if you just type in Russian CNC, you'll see CNC woodworking in there. Um, but uh, I just found out a lot of you guys uh, have uh, Vitaly's um, STL file bundles or you get models from him over at 3dwave.org. Um, he actually learned a lot of his skills from the this family's uh, CNC setup. And they're over in Le, Le, Leband, Lab, Labadan, Laband, something like that over in the Ukrainian area. So uh, something something really cool. So Michael M., that's one of the uh, websites I was talking about. Um, and then I talked about your site, actually, uh, right here. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, that's mine. Um, but anyways, that's, that's kind of where we're at with stuff. Um, you know, uh, there's quite a few different things on uh, YouTube. If, if you search um, floral STL, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to find. There is a great one. Uh, core STL. Let's search that. Um, STL file. Okay. And... Let's see if we can find the one that I'm thinking of and you will be able to kind of use all of your STL stuff. This is, this is actually um, a sales, a sales model. Uh, no, I'm, I'm watching on YouTube. You have another site you're responding to. Oh, oh. Michael, uh, sorry, I'm I'm using StreamYard. Uh, so Mike was asking uh, everything here, and uh, what I what I was talking about was Mike is uh, Michael Nizzo is on Facebook. So I I do a lot on Facebook on um, on uh, YouTube and stuff like that. So pretty much try to be on a lot of the uh, social media is. But these ones here are really good at showing you different stuff. It may not be 
with the Vetric software, but it does give you a really good idea of how you can uh, model items. And pretty much once you learn one 3D uh, environment, you can you can replicate that in another one. So uh, you know you can use Mesh Mixer and create something just like you could in Vetric. It just would be optimized for 3D printing rather than wood carving, um, you know, and stuff like that. So just to understand a lot of this stuff, um, you know, it will it will do it for you. This is kind of one of the things that I'm looking at doing, um, you know, stuff like this. And you can see I go through and just try to run my myself into an understanding of what what I want to do with these models and go from there. Uh, Mahalo, I will be honored to be a guest. I like to share my journey of life, stay positive and keep rolling. Uh, I recently got a spire and I am hooked. So Michael Nizzo just sent two messages and that's really cool, Mike. Um, I love hearing that guys are upgrading from their typical uh, V-carve setup and actually learning a 3D environment and stuff like that. So you guys have seen how we map out um, kind of setting up the vector boundaries and then using those vector boundaries to create shape profiles. Um, I gave you uh, quite a few resources uh, for different YouTube channels that you can research that will help you. Um, I gave you some key terms that you're going to be able to use like toning, glazing, staining, sealing, um, you know, stuff like that. If you search that stuff, um, there will be videos there and, uh, you can move forward with that. Uh, I showed you how you can map out, uh, your design, uh, for rough stock to save machining time. Um, and then create vector boundaries just to uh, carve that part. So you can actually, instead of having a roughing pass go all the way through all this, you can actually do vector boundaries and machine a lot of this stuff away uh, before you ever get into a uh, finished roughing pass and a finishing pass. And that's called rest machining, um, so on and so forth. So with that being said, we're coming up on 59 minutes and 29 seconds. I'm going to bid you adieu. Ladies and gentlemen, have a good night. Keep producing on your CNCs. Let me see what you're doing. Later.